Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. So safety is very important in the workshop and I don't have a first aid kit in here. So I've got some bits and I'm going to build a cabinet for them. So I'll show you what's going in there. So there's lots of information online about lots of things that need to go in the first aid kit. And I went on the NHS website and they've got a list of things. So I've got a series of dressings and plasters. I've got an eye wash thing and some eye wash solution. Some more dressings and bandages, a couple of different sizes of tape and some scissors, safety pins and some butterfly stitches, emergency burn thing, a couple of different painkillers and some antihistamine, some gloves, some cleaning sterile wipes, some antiseptic cream and some antiseptic wipes. And because I'm an optimist, so first job is to get the box built. Now I've got these bits of material that are about 100 mil wide and they're going to be perfect. So all I need to do is cut four bits down to the correct length. With that done, I can get my router and box joint jig set up and get the fingers cut. I'm not going to show you much detail here as I've done whole videos dedicated to using this jig. So if you want more information, go and check those out. With all the joints cut, I can give all the pieces a quick sand down before I can get them put together. Before assembly, I always have a dry fit and then I lay out all the pieces in the correct position. So then I can get glue in and get them all slotted together. I made some corner clamps the other week and quite a lot of people suggested putting some tape on. So that's what I did and this will stop the glue sticking to them. You see, I do always listen to you lot. This box is actually too small to get all four clamps in. So I'm going to get one on opposite corners and then I can just get some normal clamps in to pull everything else tight. While I waited for the glue to dry on those, I could get some bits glued up into a panel and this is going to be the door for the cabinet. Now I made those panel clamps for gluing up panels, strangely enough. But what I made them for is to glue up really small panels or really thin panels. And this wood is just too chunky. So I'm just using parallel clamps and I'm probably gonna modify or make some new panel clamps so that I can glue up bigger panels and thicker panels. For the back of the box, I've got this very thin bit of plywood. So I set this router to the height of the ply. Then I can run this bearing guided router bit around the inside of the box, cutting a rebate for the back to go onto. Rebate cut, I can measure it and get the panel cut to the correct size. So obviously a router leaves round corners. I found this washer that matches up and I'm going to use that to round off the corners on the plywood. So the other option would be to square up the corners that you've just routed. But on such thin ply, rounding the corners seems the easiest option. With all four corners rounded, I just have a test fit of the panel and I'm pretty pleased with that fit. So now I can get it permanently secured in place. So I run a bead of glue around the rebate and then I can get the panel in and I get some brad nails fired in at an angle to secure it in place. This cabinet needs some internal shelves and dividers, so I can measure the internal dimensions and cut some bits of wood to length. These can be slid in, but now the back's in, they're too wide. Also, I want the door to fit into the cabinet, so I get a scrap of wood to represent the door, and then I can mark a line on that internal shelf to see how wide it needs to be. I can then get the shelf out, take it over to the table saw, 
set the fence up to that line I've just marked and rip this bit down. And I'm also going to rip down every other bit that needs to go in the cabinet. The eyewash bottle is the biggest thing that needs to go in there. So I use that to determine the height of the first shelf, get it marked, get some glue on, then I can get it put in place and fire some brad nails into it from the outside. I'm not worried about the brad nails leaving marks on the outside because I'm going to come back later and fill and paint this whole cabinet. I've cut down a couple of other dividing pieces that can get some glue on, put together. I just check they're square, then I can get some brad nails in to hold them together. These can then get some more glue put on and slid into the cabinet. And then again, I fire some brad nails in from the outside to hold them in place. I measured the position of the shelves and then I can mark out the position of them on the back so I can fire some brad nails through the ply into the shelves. With all the shelves and dividers in place, I can then rip down that door to the thickness to fit into the cabinet. I can then take it to the mitre saw and cross cut it down to length. The door is now a perfect fit, but I've got to take one more thing into consideration and that's I wanted to fit a piano hinge in. So I can mark out how long the hinge needs to be and then just using a hacksaw I can get it cut to length. Now I just need to trim a little more material off the door to accommodate the hinge. Now the door fits in and there's enough room for the hinge to slide in as well. With all the woodworking done, I can get the holes filled and then sand everything down ready for painting. I set my spray booth up outside and then I can get it painted. Spraying certainly makes it a lot easier to get into these little tight spaces. So most first aid boxes or cabinets I looked at had a cross on the front to indicate what they were. So I drew out a cross on a bit of paper. I can then get this bit of paper positioned in the middle of the door and use an awl just to poke out all the corners. I did it this way because I didn't want to draw directly onto my door. With all the holes marked out, I can then join up the dots and draw out the cross. Okay, I said I didn't want to draw on the door, but what I meant is I didn't want to have any extra lines. This is just going to be material that I'm going to remove in a bit. I need to secure this panel down, so I just put a scrap of wood on, get one of my hold fasts, and hold it down in place. Now that I can find my chisels, I can pick the one I need and start carving out that cross. Now if my chisels hadn't been on the wall like that, I don't think I'd have ever thought about carving the cross. So I really think having the tools to hand and easily accessible changes how I'm going to work. Didn't take long to carve that out and it gives it a nice handmade look. Those holes I drilled for the magnets, I can just get some CA glue in and then get the magnets pushed in place. Checking that they're the right way around before I do so they're actually attracted to each other. I hadn't actually thought how I was going to attach this to the wall. So I just decided to use some of these brass hanging plates. A couple of screws to put them on, nice and easy. So as I got a brass hinge, brass hanging plates, I thought I'd add a brass knob to open the door. I 
I can now get the brass piano hinges fitted. Using one of these self-centering drill bits makes fitting hinges so much easier. With the holes drilled, I get some little 2.5mm screws in place, and that's all the hardware fitted. To seal the paint and offer a bit of protection, I give the whole thing a coat with clear wax, and then I can buff it all off. And that's it all done. I can get a screw through one of these plates into the MDF wall, then I can level it up and get the second screw in. Now I can just get all the bits put in place. These little shelves and dividers help keep everything nice and neat and should be easy to find. But hopefully, I'll never have to use it. Thanks for watching, thanks to my Patreons, and please subscribe for more videos.